Hi folks, my name's Cliff Wagner. I'm the owner of the Workshops of the Restoration Society. I want to welcome you to this episode of Hands at Work. This episode is uh, storied around tables and uh, things that we get in, in, in the way that's a beneficial to us as a company and to me personally is that when we do tables uh, for a family, uh, I kind of tend that it helps our tables bring people together and it's the memories and we don't often get the ability how many times a year to really have the whole family together and to sit down at one table. Uh, I certainly like to get the wow factor when people see our tables, they say wow. And when they sit there as a family, it's the memories that kind of is an extra benefit to me and to our company. I think you'll find this episode of Hands at Work and Tables very interesting, so stay tuned. This part of the episode of Hands at Work and Tables are going to have to do with kind of three or four basic things. Uh, when we do a table in the home, whether it's an antique, a table that's been in the family, a table that you buy on the retail market, or a table that uh, we do for you here at uh, the workshops. It could be an Amish table, handmade, uh, just the way you want it, and you'll be able to see maybe 20, 30 different sizes and styles in our workshop now. But here's what goes into to making some decisions uh, about tables. Let's say you have a table that was in your family and uh, you don't have the chairs. Uh, we at the, at the workshops can restore this table to its original look or we can change the color. We can also make additional leaves to make it the size that you need. And that's important that your table in the area that you have it in, in a closed position, will look right, and then we can work on it that in its open position, that it's open as long as it could be to sit as many people. And then of course we have chairs that we could marry to your table that would look good. Now, that's talking about an older table. Now, I wanted to show you a bit of the tables that we make. We make tables out of quarter sawn oak, and uh, that's almost as much as cherry wood today per board foot. And the Amish people that I deal with in tables are from close to Michigan. It's up in Shipshawana, uh, Indiana. And quarter saw and oak is very prevalent up there. So I went to Michigan uh, seeking a group of uh, men and, and, and craftsmen to make tables. And I was very impressed because their look is the upscale casual look. It's a look that uh, is not the country, kitcheny type, heavily uh, fabricated table. It's something that fits into the look now that you have in homes. In some homes, people decide to stay there and renovate their house in a way that they don't have a separate dining room, a formal dining room. They don't have a separate area just for eating. It's actually an open look in a lot of the newer homes or condos and some of the older homes now they're retrofitting them that you can see their dining area from other parts of the house. So you need a table, for example, that kind of will serve uh, the, uh, the use of everyday use, but also when you have people over and also it can marry to and it can look and work with the rest of the contents and design of the house. And we're very proud that we have that uh, look, the upscale casual look, I call it. We can do the wood, the species of wood that would be the right species, the style of table, the size of table, and of course the finish. And the finish is what we're known for. Of course, the Better Business Bureau thinks a lot of us. I can't remember a complaint. I've been doing this a long time. Uh, I've been messing with tables for over 50 years and uh, very proud of our tables and the reputation that we have. Uh, the tables that we restore, uh, 
we have to make them structurally sound and we have to make them uh, in a restoration way that doesn't hurt their value, but will fit into the home. table day it seems. Uh, this table was actually uh, sold in New York. The firm started in 1836, so certainly this table is of the 1800 vintage. Uh, our goal with this table is to uh, not do anything that's, that uh, isn't reversible. However, it was actually uh, finished over existing. They varnished it. Uh, we're going to rub this out uh, this is our finish. We actually used a cleaner that was strong enough to take old hand oils, wax, and dirt off, but not strong enough to remove the finish. And then the first thing we do is to turn a table or items upside down to look at it, and we found the tag. But in cleaning the table, we discovered you could see brush marks that where the finish was folded under where the person who done it and then there was a professional repair on one of the legs. You could see it was split, and that was a newer repair. The, the varnish probably was done in the late 1800s, 1890, whatever. Uh, back then, uh, a lot of uh, rooms had fireplaces in them, uh, and a table like this, this old money look, elegant look, sterling and lace look, uh, wouldn't have been in a primitive type setting. It would have been in a high-end home maybe in the parlor or the large entryway. But this is a fine table. Uh, we cleaned it with this cleaner, uh, finished over existing, rubbed it out with rubbing compound, and, and I'm, I'm touching up the little, uh, uh, little lines, heads, and the teeth. And then I'm going to rub it out again to make it duller. Uh, the problem with the table is somebody didn't realize the value of it, and they had plants sitting on it all four corners and some other areas in the table had veneer missing and bad. And whenever you, and whenever you do a veneer repair, uh, it's hard, but what's worse is when uh, the uh, damage goes beyond the, the thin veneer that's on top and it goes to the core or the, uh, uh, the substrate and hurts that. Uh, in this table, that was the case. But we got it flat, we ironed it out. We had to get the old glue out of there, which was made out of uh, horse hides and whatever, uh, because a contemporary glue will not adhere to that. So we got it clean, we spray this activator in there, and then we uh, turn it up on the end so the glue would penetrate deep down under the veneer but it dries so quick that it actually smokes. It gets real hot, and we have to put a flat board and, and, and press very hard, and we work together to do that to make sure we get an even uh, plane, a flat plane. If we don't get that flat, we're in big trouble in Little China uh, because then our repair is worse than the damage. A table like this, I've been on it three days. Uh, the people appreciate um, not that I'm expensive, but the type of work that we do is expensive. And guess what? The materials we use are expensive. They're, some of them are exotic. You have to get them from Germany, France. Uh, but this table's going to be great. I think I'll be able here in a few minutes, you'll be able to see how different this top is going to look. Uh, I'm doing, uh, to fool the eye, uh, uh, striking in some grain of this crotch mahogany veneer where we had a very bad damage, and I'm making it wide here, uh, in, and then I'm going to tone it, and then I'll be able to glaze the whole top. I think the people who own the table will know that it's been repaired, uh, but a guest would have to look very hard to see that it's repaired. If you would like a free brochure, call the workshops of the Restoration Society at 859-491-1292.
please remember that it is important to visit a local restorer before having furniture restoration done. If you would like more information about furniture restoration, just call the workshops at 859-491-1292 or stop by the shops located at 3414 De Corsi Avenue in Latonia, Kentucky, about two miles off of Interstate 275. You know, folks, we've been talking about tables uh, on this uh, segment of Hands at Work. I want to share some things with you about tables that are vintage, uh, brand new, very high quality tables, and brand uh, new tables that are sold uh, mostly in the retail market. Uh, not that one's better than the other, but I would like to show you a bit of the difference. The table that I have right here was made uh, late uh, 19th century or early 20th century. It's what's called a refractory table. It has a very heavy apron. That's the part that goes underneath the table and all kind of mechanism things here because a refractory table, what that is is when the leaf can be pulled out at the end and there's no leaves in the middle. Now on this table, on the restoration, there's some things that are some issues. Uh, when the lady has a uh, guest sitting at the table, uh, their knees are hitting uh, the bottom of the apron. Not good. One of the reasons for that is I think all the vitamins that uh, we as adults have uh, taken over the years, and more than that, our diet. So what used to fit, uh, really, it doesn't fit anymore. And also, the center panel of this table, the veneer is shot. Uh, on other parts of this episode of Hands at Work, you've seen us bring back to life tables that had bad veneer on the corners and here and there. On this table, the veneer is so bad in the center section, we're going to have to replace that whole center section with new oak, with new wood, and then age it to make it conform to the other parts of the table. We're also going to adjust this apron by removing these little brackets here, and it'll be done reversible. Uh, we'll put them in a nice sealed bag and mark what they are. Uh, we only have to do the outer edges, and I think that's a part where the people's people, the, the, uh, the guest legs are hitting. And again, there's no leaf in the middle that this can be pulled out. So that would be about right where a, a, a person's leg would be hitting. And these are loose, so we'll be able to take these out, fill the holes properly. But look at the thickness of the wood, look at the fine detail, look at all the detail, and you can see what I'm talking about insofar as quality. Now let's go to an extreme other part of the world, another part of the world of tables, a brand new table. It's sold in a retail market, and, and we'll see what happens. We have one of probably 15,000 tables that are all exactly the same. This table was made in China. It has that on the underside of it. If we turn this table over and looked at the construction on the underside, and compare that to a table that's 100 years old, you would see the difference. I'm going to give you word pictures of the difference. The edge of this, what's called an apron, that's very fancy like that apron, if you look at the edge, it's uh, pressed wood. If you would take your fingers and kind of hit this, it doesn't sound like wood. That's what's called an applied molding, and that's an epoxy uh, mixed together and made like a plastic and they make a mold. Now the beautiful top on this has a marquetry looking inlay and what we refer to as book match veneer. And you've seen me bring back to its original fine look tables in another part of this segment of Hands at Work. And now we're looking at a table made in China at the beautiful work they do. But guess what? Underneath this paper-thin veneer, this is called the veneer, a photo, photographic veneer. It is so thin, if we would rub out the edge of this, which we have, we had to, to repair this table, uh, 
we would rub right through that paper thin veneer. It's actually a photograph. So with 80 million people and a couple computers and robots, they're able to make 15,000 of these tables identical and market them wholesale at a real low price and a very high price retail. Uh, as well as in China where you have a photographic patterns in other parts of foreign countries, say in, in the Pacific Rim, Indonesia, the, the species of wood, God made all wood get different. He didn't make any mistakes on species of wood and forest. They just all have different characteristics. Pine is soft and have knots. The species from the Pacific Rim, they grow so quick that the cells aren't as hard as our American hardwoods. Our American hardwoods are sought after by uh, furniture manufacturers and people all over the world. So in fact, we have some shortages in certain species and the cost has uh, skyrocketed for high quality uh, American made solid wood tables and other things obviously. But what this table is, what they have done is actually a photographic pattern. These book match veneers in this market and that marketry is created so that it can be replicated over, over, and over again. And it's done like a photograph would be, and it's transferred on a very film-thin veneer that's applied to a substrate that's press wood. In this case, the gentleman that was, uh, the people who were actually, there was a water damage and, and a fire in this home, and uh, they were bringing the table into their shop uh, to be able to work in the home, do drywall work uh, with all the dust and the painting and redo the floor. They wanted to get it out of there, but guess what? They dropped the table and they mashed the end. It's either this end or over there, and I feel good when I can't tell which one I repaired, but this was mashed, crumpled into there. Here I have a problem. Sometimes, and as a matter of fact, uh, cheap furniture is made cheap. In this case, they can retail it at a very high price, but it's made cheap. And I had to create a, like a bridge truss on this corner or this one, and then do some magic here and, and make this conform that really uh, nobody could tell the difference. But I tell you what, what, working on real wood is a heck of a lot easier than working on a photographic pattern and press wood. Now, folks, we're on the, the third uh, segment of uh, dining tables, and uh, what we're talking about now is a new table that's high quality, that's hard to find now. It's what we call solid wood. And we talked how typically uh, in, in the retail market, that's not the case. Very hard to find solid woods now. The difference is you can see it pretty darn quick. I call it old money. How much room do you need to get a chair out from the end of a table? Well, a big guy like me, you probably need 10 feet. No, you need uh, an exterior door is 36 inches wide typically. An interior door is 2, 8, or 32 inches. So certainly a big man ought to be able to get out of a table yeah, at 2, 8, 32 inches. Typically you can prepare uh, the table size for 24 inches. The width of the table uh, has to do not with people so much and how many people you can set, but has to do with the place settings. Time you put the dishes there and the, and the drinks and the, everything else. Uh, having a table two feet wide obviously wouldn't be wide enough. This is 42 inches. That's a standard pretty much, but you can make it 48, you can make it 60, you make it whatever you want. The length of the table has to do in a closed position that it looks right, and in an open position, if we're gonna have leaves, that you have the optimum look. This table is solid cherry, and it has saw cuts in it, and distress, dress, distressing can be numbered from one to 10. This is heavily distressed. 
with saw marks. But this is cherry, and it's an oval table, and we can make this table very long. This table's small with just one leaf. And if you look at the legs, if you look at the pedestal, how massive that is, how nice that is, you see. So all of our tables, including the new live edge, which is next to it, is cherry, and uh, are very high end and very nice looking. And uh, I think we do a very nice job with tables. Our chairs work with them. They're upscale casual. Uh, they're guaranteed as long as you have them. Uh, we have all different species of wood and design. And one thing with the chair, you want to try to get something not only is designed that you like it, but also is comfortable. If you look at this chair, it has what I call a scoop or saddle seat. If you look at the back, that's a steam bent back. Guess what? That's very good on your back. Very comfortable, you see. You know, you talked to me, ma'am, about this table just a few moments ago, how it belonged to three uh, great aunts, great of, my aunts husband's. of your husband. And you said your husband's not with us. And I mm -hmm. asked you, would he be happy that you'd done the table? Oh, yeah, he'd love it. Whoever owned this uh, had an appreciation of fine things. It's from uh, approximately circa 1890. Uh, it's a Victorian look. It's actually a game table. It has some drawers with a nice sleeve in it to hold the cards. Underneath the table, one of the stories about this is it had a leather top. And we did a faux finish rather than uh, uh, leave the old replacement vinyl on it. It had vinyl over uh, where someone probably uh, replaced the original leather when they would not have to have done so. But this is a real neat table, and uh, I think you'll have it for a long time. Oh, I intend to. Okay. <laughs> the owner of this table is 93 years old, and she got to my heart. This table was in her family. It must be over 100, 150 years old. And when she seen the table, she cried. When I, I took her into our showroom and showed her the table, she came in with her little cane, and she cried when she seen the table. It got to my heart. Robert, come on in here. Do you recognize this? Hardly. It's you pretty. Don't? Tell me about this table. Was it in your family? Uh, yes, it was my great-grandparents that sat in their front room. Um, so it was when they had it, it was bright, fire engine red. And, yes. Uh, <laughs> And then when it got passed down to my parents, mm -hmm. uh, my mom refinished it, but she just used it as an everyday table and it had gotten water damaged up on the top and down down on the, the bottom part from plants sitting on it. It talked to me, it said somebody mistreated him. <laughs> this table had some serious issues. Uh, the top was veneer. It was probably made between 1920, 1940, probably closer to the 20s. It's mahogany. And like you said, mahogany can either be a, that bright red or it goes toward the browns. One thing with mahogany, as it gets older, it gets very dark. And this table was very dark. You couldn't see the grain. Right. Uh, it's not unusual that an old piece at size like this, a table like this, is maybe off to the side in the room on the owner before you had it, your mother and father. And I think your mother or whoever before that had put plants on it. And when we see a top that has rings, I mean, you could see where the plants yeah, were sitting. Yeah, it was severe. Yes, it was. The, um, the ring, if you see a ring on a, a piece of wood on a tabletop, a lot of times it's a white cloudy look. It, it, that means that the uh, water went through uh, the surfaces of the clear but not into the wood, you see. So we can correct that differently than when the ring is black. That's where that water for years where the plant had set and been watered, watered has penetrated the finish and down into the wood. Then the next problem is actually where it lifts the veneer. And the process of getting that flat 
and uh, taking care of that problem is beyond just the finishing. Uh, if you call the finishing a, uh, a cosmetic repair, uh, you call repairing the veneer cosmetic surgery, you see. Mm -hmm. This table went even beyond that. This is a sample, I've kept it for you, uh, of what the top was. This is mahogany. This is the core wood under uh, the mahogany. And then beyond that, it's poplar that these two rested on. The water penetrated uh, the veneer, penetrated the core wood, you oh, see. Wow. Right, oh wow. And that's not an easy <laughs> one, Bob, that's not an easy one. So what I had to do is uh, cosmetic surgery, and uh, I need that, by the way, if you could give me some recommendations. Uh, the, uh, I actually cut a square out of this table, much bigger than this, inlaid uh, the core, inlaid another piece, and then I had to do the best I could a faux finish, leaving some of the little sins still on the table. We don't mm -hmm. want it to look perfect. You wouldn't either if you had a, a vase on your head for 40, I'll 50. Say I, remember those, I remember some of those sins from being little and, and being there. So those, oh, really? Those, yeah. Well, we've left some of those in there. Maybe <laughs> underneath you carved your initials. But no, this is neat that you keep the table. Actually, we do a hand rub finish. Uh, Jason watched me do a table uh, much like this uh, in, in the damage. And this table probably has uh, four or five different colors on it, and in between each of those colors are uh, uh, hand rub uh, clears. So you end up with six, seven, eight coats. But we don't want to make it look like a, a grand piano, Liberace's piano. It has a nice hand rub look. And Bob, I hope you keep it. Uh, we sure Thanks will. For you and that was the reason for getting it done. So yeah. Will you keep this too? Sure. That's the old. Yes, well, that's the old bones. Wow. Thanks for coming to our shop. Thank you for doing. Thank that. you. Thank you again. Okay. If you would like a free brochure, call the workshops of the Restoration Society at eight five nine four nine one one two nine two. Please remember that it is important to visit a local restorer before having furniture restoration done. If you would like more information about furniture restoration, just call the workshops at 859-491-1292 or stop by the shops located at 3414 De Corsi Avenue in Latonia, Kentucky, about two miles off of Interstate 275. Well, folks, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, episode of Hands at Work. Uh, just think that I... I uh, love what I do. Just think about that. Uh, every morning I look forward to come into work. I'm going to be 78 years old. One of the men that work here is 86. We're a bunch of old geezers. But my wife often has told me she prayed that I would have something in my life in the way of a job that I would love. And you know, I remember at my home and the table that I made, uh, we have this big bow window and the snow coming down. We had the curtains open and you look from our driveway into the dining table area and you see the family there and the Christmas wreath and the sounds of the Christmas uh, music and the sounds of my grandchildren and, and, and everybody having a nice Christmas dinner. Uh, that's what it's about. We bring families together and the memories. And uh, sometimes it's just a small little thing that we do for people. It's so meaningful uh, that it's a part of their family. And I hope uh, when I'm gone, uh, long gone, that some of these things that we've made and some of this restoration and fabrication that we've done will be used over and over and over again and enjoyed. And thanks again for watching Hands at Work.